Here now is a story about a collection of metal and plastics that had been hewn together into the form of a landing gear and attached to the front of a commercial airliner. Altogether, in a holistic sense, everything was fine for the landing gear. Nothing was too bad and nothing was too good, but the landing gear felt like he was walking down the middle of life's great valley, just as he rolled down the middle of the runway at the beginning and end of every flight. In fact, the landing gear had learned a great many things as far as the learning of landing gears goes, and so was a sufficiently useful piece of hardware. He had learned to raise himself into the wheel well shortly after takeoff to reduce drag in flight, and to subsequently descend again when the plane was doing the same to facilitate a smooth landing for everyone involved. He learned to pass the flight time alone in the wheel well, playing variants of solitaire with a withered deck of cards. But one thing the landing gear had not learned was this, to find contentment in himself and in his role. For some reason, he wanted a little more. Maybe, maybe it is understandable that this bar and wheels was slightly miffed at missing the grand views afforded by the middle of every flight. The vast oceans of water and grass, the ridges of mountains and cities reaching upwards, the specklings of lakes and farms and islands and everything else scattered all about and in between. He only ever got to see the crumbs on each end and spent the rest of the time cooped up snug in a wheel well, feeling what used to be the comforting vibrations of the fantastic metal sculpture that hurled him and the dozens of hearts above him impossibly through the air. Somehow, some way, the landing gear got a pry bar from the airport staff and stowed it away in a far corner of the wheel well. It's hard to say what changed, or when it happened, or what drives these kinds of actions. What brings about discontentment and disillusionment where both were once totally lacking? What is different for the myriad of other landing gears throughout the world and the years that served out their time to retirement without a thought of complaint or disservice to their station? Was it a stray pamphlet or brochure dropped by a tourist with pictures of sublime views from an airplane mid-flight? Was it Poor maintenance, perhaps? Not enough axle grease? Or too many overdue overhauls? Who can say for sure what the cause was? The effect, however, was all too apparent. Nothing happened immediately. Flights continued as scheduled, without incident. It seemed enough to the landing gear to just know that the option to do something about it was there the pry bar lurking in the corner like that. But then, one day, he made use of the pry bar, and before he even knew what was happening, the landing gear was staring at the ground five miles below him. Everything inside of him was lurching everywhere else. The wind was so loud that there was more feeling it than hearing. He was sure there must be all sorts of alarms going off upstairs, but he was finally happy to see the great things that all the passengers above had been soaking in for years. Almost immediately, however, one of the wheel well doors he had pried open and damaged twisted off with a terrifying sound and smashed into the landing gear. It was all downhill from there, or at least just down. He found himself ripped out of the wheel well, the only place he had ever really been since he could remember and spinning freely through the air. He caught a fleeting glimpse of a few furrowed faces in the windows above, quickly receding.